Welcome back, everybody, to another spectacular edition of the USFL podcast. I'm the ref, as always, representing Pro Football Newsroom, the number one home to alternative football news. And I'm joined, as always, by my man, Zach Kyleman of the Gridiron Gallery. How are you doing today, my friend? Hey, hey, hey. I'm in for another episode. I am stoked. Glad to be talking with you, as always. I always love this time of the week, Thursday nights, getting to record and chat with you about this league. Fascinating week. We got plenty of stuff to talk about <laughs> in one way or another. So, look, I've been I've been ready to get get this off off our chest and just kind of like d- jump into you know the big the stuff in the room the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's stuff. what a crazy week. I mean, if you look back to our episode last week and our expectations and what we got, I mean, we're deep diving. We're jumping into it. We're going Columbo style. I don't know, Zach. Have you ever watched an episode of Columbo? I've watched bits. I got an uncle that uh, loves the show. That's like his main end of day thing. So, you know, if I don't watch any of it, I get plenty of references on my Facebook feed almost every night. It's it's a very consistent stream of Columbo. Your uncle so, sounds yeah. like my kind of guy because I my wife hates it. I love it. Columbo is <laughs> my thing. And I'm telling you, I feel like I went a little bit Columbo on this on this whole situation. But we're, we're going to save that for a little bit later. We do have a couple things to talk about before we kick things off. So, hey, boom, bing, bang, bong. We're over here on YouTube. If that button's red, go ahead and click it. And you know what? Click the bell. It builds morale. You're feeling down, want to feel a little bit better? Click the bell. It's going to make your day better. And you're going to be alerted every time we drop a new video. Hey, you like USFL content? Boom, sing, sing, sign you up. It's one of Bingo. those days, guys. Bing bong. But hey, you can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all those things over at USFL l podcast nice and simple go ahead and follow us like i said we're pretty we're mostly active on twitter but you can find us elsewhere as well we're getting there guys get over it hey but since we're talking about hanging out talking with the community we got a big event coming on it's not even really our big event it's the usfl's big event opening Mm -hmm. weekend april 16th we have the birmingham stallions they're taking on the New Jersey Generals. And you know what's happened before that, Zach? We got a little shindig out in the parking lot. That's where the party's at. The party's in the parking lot. That's Spring right. Spring stock kicking off 12 p.m. Central. Hopefully by next episode, Zach. Hopefully by next episode, we're going to have some more details, some specifics on which part of the parking lot the party's going to be at. But I'll tell you this. There is no party unless it's in the parking lot. We're hanging out with Spring Stock. And it's not just us. Like I said... It's Springstock, just like it's Woodstock. We have a whole bunch of other USFL podcasts coming out. Of course, we have the USFL podcast. We have this is the USFL podcast with my man, Tron Hawkins. We have Jim Mernier. I mean, ever since I've gotten that name down, I can't stop saying it. But he's with the Controlling the Chaos podcast, as well as the Inside the Walls podcast with Mm -hmm. a familiar face right here, Zach Kyleman. If you like that arena football, you should be checking that out as well, because that's kicking into gear so we're gonna throw right. that promo what do, what is the exact uh the handle on that bad boy uh in walls pod in walls pod in walls pod but yeah get, that's kicking off too get, crazy to think got jim there you know i mean we're gonna we'll have plenty of uh at least those from the community that'll be there too it sounds like every day we see to have one or two new people that are like hey either i might be there or i am trying my best to get there or i will be there so you know, plenty of people that have, you know, online comment content creators or community members are going to be involved with this. It's going to be a great time, you know, and we're even going to have, uh, or even one of our, uh, partners of the show is going to be there too, from what it sounds like. Am mm-hmm. I right? Yeah. Yeah. What we have yeah, Royal retros should be coming down. I, I don't know if he's going to be setting up a booth or not, but he is hooking us up with a little goodie for the giveaway. So Mm -hmm. do you like the USFL? I assume you do. I assume you do if you're, one, listening to this podcast and, two, going to the game. Well, I'll tell you what. Our sponsor, Royal Retros, they make some good, solid retro gear, and he's hooking us up so we can hook you up with a Steve Young LA Express uh, replica jersey wow. and, and these aren't just printed on these are fully stitched so hopefully hopefully by next week's episode i'm gonna have that in hand so i can show it off on stream but 
We're, we're going to work out the specifics because there's giveaways for if you tune in online and there's giveaways if you show up in person. So we get it. Some people aren't that close to Birmingham. So we're also going to have giveaways for both. So we're working out the specifics there. So stay tuned for more details on Springstock, but also make sure you're checking out Royal Retros as well, because if you do want to scoop up some of that gear, maybe there's something you want that isn't a Steve Young jersey, well, you can save 10% off of any of your purchases by using code USFL podcast. And I mean, they have old XFL gear, USFL mm-hmm. World Football League. I think they even have some hockey stuff on there as well. So if you like That's right. even just retro gear or sports in general, they got your hookup. They got your hookup. Uh, but Springstock is going to be fun. We're going to be doing some giveaways. We do have the 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 live event scheduled, too, as well. So if you go in our channel, you can set that reminder starting now. Starting now, you can set that reminder again, 12 p.m. Central. One other thing I do want to talk about before we kick things off, because to me, at least this is, this is some cool news for me, right? So sure. USFL Newsroom, we're the longest-running USFL-specific news outlet. Maybe other than... Uh, news USFL on Twitter. I think we probably mm-hmm. announced the same day. But as far as websites go, it was always a section, a part of Pro Football Newsroom. Well, not anymore, buddy. Not anymore. No. Starting earlier this week, USFLnewsroom.com now has its own dedicated website. So all the news, columns, our podcasts, other podcasts. So we have the Michigan Panther cast. This is the USFL podcast. And quite honestly, we might have some new podcasts coming up and, and maybe even some other guests to announce for Springstock that I'm working through the details on as, as well. But usflnewsroom.com, check it out daily for all the latest USFL news. I mean, it's only going to be the USFL stuff there. So if that's what you're really digging, we got your back there. Boom. I mean, you've got it all, you got it all, you know, for the most, for pretty much all of it. One other thing I'll do it this week since it last yes, week, I love 5k it. giveaway. Oh. We're going to be giving away with that. That's what I'm doing. Um, we're looking to get five, five K subs. Now that's our next goal with that. We're going to be giving away a USFL Jersey from the website. One of the pre-ordered ones mm-hmm. that's supposed to come out in mid May. So if you are wanting to get in on that action, and if you are just checking out this channel now, which we've gotten a lot of people that we've seen are joining in and watching this sh- channel more so than la- than recent weeks, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell. You'll be entered automatically. Also check out our Discord at Pro Football Newsroom. So yeah, the un- the independent site thing, I was really thrilled with that. It, so I, I've been happy. I'm glad to see that move. It's a fun really. new journey. It's a fun new journey. It, it, it's going to be fun to kick things off from the ground up. And I'll say, I'll tell you this, looking at the early numbers, I mean, it's doing pretty dang good. It's doing pretty dang That's good great. for not even being able, not being indexed on Google yet and all of these other things. So again, thank you guys for the support there, because I, I know a lot of this is coming from social media, uh, but we're looking to, we're going to be covering every game there. And mm-hmm. quite honestly, some of them live. We have a new live blogging feature that I've built into the new USFL newsroom. So some of these okay. games, there's going to be literal live coverage on USFL newsroom. So, you know, okay. at least during the last couple of seasons with the spring league CFL, I would live tweet games. It's going to be very similar to that, but on the website. So stay tuned. Not every game, not every game, but some games, maybe some of those bigger ones. But I, I think that's enough of the 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 boring stuff. I, you know what everybody wants to talk about, Zach. You yes. know what they're all here to hear. And I, I know, I've been, oh. yeah. I mean, you you and I have both been, I would think, trying to figure out best way to approach this all week. How do you look at this? Because, you know, I think everyone's had a take on it. Even people that didn't talk about the league have said and come out of the wor- woodwork and are starting to throw articles out there and be like, oh my god. This is happening. I'll let you introduce it, but you know, so, just saying. Yep. Every, everyone wants to talk about this because you know of how ridiculous it sounds on paper. Well, I, I always talk about the bingo list, right? If I would have woke up, you know, at the beginning of 2022 and saw this on my bingo list, I would have said, "There, this isn't. This isn't going to happen." The old, the alleged old USFL is suing the new USFL, right? And and yeah. I know I didn't have to use alleged there. But I am going to preface this. You're going to hear a lot of alleged and our opinions, because in my opinion, 
Zach, in my opinion, people that are litigious are litigious. That is my mm-hmm. opinion. And I'm not pointing fingers at Steve Earhart specifically. I would never do that. I would never say that my opinion directly points to him or the people around him. So that's not at all the case. But my opinion is litigious people are litigious. And we're kind of seeing that here. Now, earlier this year, this isn't new. This isn't, this isn't like new breaking news. But back when the USFL, for, or at least Fox announced that they were launching the USFL in April of this year, back June of last year, uh, Steve Earhart joined the Philadelphia Inquirer, where he first kind of aired his grievances, to right. say the least. Right. And that's where he even then, though, he said he wasn't really concerned about the league starting up. He just wanted to make sure that it was done right. Well, done right seems to mean a payday. Allegedly, Um, in my opinion, in my opinion, it means it's a payday. Now, that was my first instinct. When I first saw this, I said, "Okay, clearly with the timelines, we're just over a month until kickoff there there was many months for this to come through mm-hmm. now a couple observations right knowing that there from june until march of this year there was several months to get this in order and for this not to be a last minute decision you know what i would expect zach i would expect the filing to be pristine pristine no errors no errors at all. Instead, we get Jim Kelly's name wrong. We get the kickoff day wrong. We get specific details. And even, just quite honestly, a lot of, in my opinion, fluff. Fluff. In my opinion. Right. And you're referencing, of course, um, you're talking at least motion of, pre- of a preliminary injunction and, of course, the proposed version as mm-hmm. well, both that were filed in uh, California district courts out in Los Angeles. Um Yeah. I mean, some of this definitely has looked that way. And this is just based on readings. I'll I'll say right off the bat, we're not lawyers. We're we're not, neither of us are legal experts. We are trying to kind of ingest as much as possible and get as much as possible to give you what we have read. And plenty of people have done a great job of that. Actually, uh, one of our buddies on our discord who wrote into the RUSFL Reddit did a great job breaking down this entire complaint and motion kind of put into different pages, but we'll do our best to kind of put on paper what we're talking about. So yes, first and foremost, yes, there is definitely fluff fluff in here on the legacy of the old or OG, whichever mm-hmm. one you want to call it. I, I reference it as the OG USFL at this point. Okay. Um, whereas the new USFL is the Fox and Brian Woods spring league brought back 2011 trademarked originally with a different corporation filed version. Mm -hmm. So the OG one is essentially coming in is made a complaint and says, Hey, um, this is causing confusion because we're a business, you know, credit. they started up only very recently put together this LLC to file this. Yes. (laughs) It's not it. The real USFL LLC has not been around very long. It's you could argue and I'll say allegedly argue that it was put together just to do this. And it probably was, that's my opinion. In our opinions. Yes. In our opinion, it was put together just to do this, to file a motion really to stop the league from playing and to take this into courts and say, okay, let's work this out. And there's two ways you could look at this case that we've been able to break apart on one end. If we're looking at the original, USFL members. We're talking like guys like Steve Earhart, Larry Zonka and company that are filing this at, in this Los Angeles court. They are looking at this and going, Hey, we have the, we have the history of this. We have been in a way having Mr. Earhart run our business operations, quote unquote, since the league went under after 1986, distributing monies from that original case and also handling any any deals in terms of media, you know, consumer goods, you name it. On the other hand, you have Fox and Brian Woods, who, if you look at the USTPO trademark search, the original USFL didn't get these picked up. And that's a big staple to a lot of people saying, why is this a big deal? Why isn't this just black and white where, okay, 
Brian Woods got this these trademarks exchanged to him from an original 2011 filing from a different group that tried to start their own version of the USFL. They they became the essentially the buyers of those trademarks and they filed more through that. And so now they have these marks. The original league's been dead since 86 <laughs> in principle. Mm-hmm. So why is this black and white? Well, we bring in this little thing called the Lanham Act. That that which I want to I want to thank in the in my separate um, researchings of this, uh, Seth Lessons, who's a fan of the show and a fan of our our stuff, great community member, does a lot of digging and things like that. He brought this to my attention and shot me over uh, from uh, a Lanham Act piece from Corn Cornell Law School. Essentially, a lot of it boils down to the confusion between the two. As well as really, if you're using it in commerce, there is a common trademark essentially put in place. You know, it, it, if you're going to come out and establish, and this is in the new USFL's interest that you first start out with these press releases with Doug Flutie coming out saying the USFL's back. That's a gotcha moment in their eyes. It's going to be a lot of like, okay, who really is the mark owner and what law sticks out more prevalent because I think it's because to me, it's coming down to like, okay, one side, the new guys have the legitimate filings in hand from abandoned marks that don't technically exist and that the originals didn't file, which you could have done already. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, you got guys that say, well, we were doing t-shirts. We have media that we're signing off. We had Paul Reeds, who actually is in this, by the way, uh, he was an author for one of the USFL novels that's floating around there as well. Uh, he's mentioned in this and he's done a great job with the USFL site, which mm-hmm. is like a resource for the OG version. And he was also at, he had, he can, a lot of these guys confront Mr. Earhart for business. And so the idea is that since he's doing the business dealings, he's signing off on these things, he should be the final voice is how it's being looked at. But trademarks say are trying to be, and they're not fully finished, but they have been applied and they Mm. have been, some of these have been in hand since the original, since the 2011 versions were put in place from a different organization, it's very convoluted, but it comes down to those two factors. Yeah. And <laughs> to well, two sides, the, essentially like that. The, the way I look at it is possession is nine tenths of the law. Right. And when a court looks at this, I mean, the, the first thing they're going to do, maybe not the first. And in my opinion, but they're going to look up who owns these trademarks. Right. Because quite honestly, the guy, I mean, there, it's not like there's no process that goes through when people apply for trademarks and your name gets put on that in the website, right? It has to be vetted. You ha- Here's the more important thing. You have to have the, you have to be able to show that you're actively using them, Correct. right? And so, I mean, yeah, just because you sell a t-shirt doesn't mean you can own the, own the trademarks for everything else, which they don't own the trademarks for. And Yes, maybe there there could be some confusion there, but I mean, when you when you boil it all down, which is the real business model? And I think that's how the courts are going to look at this. Which mm-hmm. one's a real business and which one's trying to capitalize on something that they kind of used to be a part of? Because the US, yeah. uh, again, you brought up the point. The one thing that they do have is the gotcha moment of, the USFL is back, but you you've even seen since that initial announcement in every one of the press releases that the USFL puts out, they specifically put in there. This is a different entity than the original. And that was probably a learning lesson, maybe even from the first release, because I believe that's, that's called out in the filing where they show the original press release and then an edited version again, correct. Is, is that enough though? Is a judge going to sit there and look at that and says, you're right. This is enough for me to topple the plans of a multi-billion dollar organization because you, you feel like you're owed something in all reality. And I, and I don't, and again, this is my opinion. I don't think the goal is even to stop the USFL, the new USFL from kicking off or using the names. I think they just want a piece of the pie. And I can get that. I understand that. But it doesn't look good for really either party, to be quite honest, right? Because you have the skeptics already that are, ha, 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 right? You even seen, we've already seen a couple of the podcasts out there just salvating in happiness of, uh, about this news about the USFL, which is non-news. Is non-news if you, I mean, yes, it's big news. Do I 
at the end of the day, do I think it's going to stop us from seeing the USFL kick off April 16th? I don't mm-hmm. think so. But again, I'm not a lawyer, right? Right. That's that's the there's our gotcha moment. We're not we're not lawyers. We're not in the law field, but we're going to try and give our best look on here. And I want to I want to explore this further, even past this episode. We're already you and I have talked off air about mm-hmm. trying to get someone that might be in the know. And I even reference a great piece that I recommend you guys checking out that kind of gave me a little more insight, at least in simplified this as to what's at stake. Um, above the law dot com, uh, a adjunct professor and writer for the and writer writer for the site, uh, Darren Heitner. I recommend you go look that up. Type in above the law USFL. It's a great just kind of summarization of what the two sides were explaining are going at. But he does a great job kind of giving his initial thought. His, his end thought on this, just his writing, um, in is that this injunction will be thrown out of court. Mm-hmm. It, it just on the basis of the base trademarks already being filed that the original didn't re did not happen to get them reinstated and that there are multiple chances to do so over the course of the 30 years that the league has been kind of under at this point. Uh, but it's still going to be a process. You know, I don't opinion again. I don't think that it stops the league. I, I mean, they don't seem to be thinking that right now. I mean, they're still talking about them. Of course, the supplemental draft, they're releasing content, you know, mm. they're still moving. Like everything's going according to plan, which would you really want to not act that way? That would just make the confidence just dip way down. If you just decide to say halt operations, we got to go over here back to Los Angeles mm. and get this thing all sorted out. Now we are going to get something soon because sure enough, the real USFL LLC is already pushing March six, March 16th as the day that we are going to hear if this is going to be a legitimate case or if it does get indeed thrown out of court, which I think for many that are, I think for the most part, since there are many that are fans of sport and that want to see something played, I think want to see at least this play. Now there's mm-hmm. the other side of this that, you know, include, I'll even include Jeff Perlman in this. I he had a piece from deadline. I was that really very surprised by that to be fair. I mean, credit, he has, in recent interviews, he is definitely a for the old product. This new one does not exactly come off as his, his favorite, but he really has not like, he really does not like this new iteration or, or the new USFL and the entity behind it. So that is going to be that side, people with the history, you know, mm. which that early on, that was about, what about the history? What about the old version? Why, why are we starting this new one and bring it back from the dead? And that side of the equation, I'm like, okay, I want to see the league play. I want this version to play, but I get your concerns with the history aspect because there are great players from it. Mm-hmm. It's this is a very big mush in the middle of this because they are two different entities, but you know, I get people's concern when it's like, I want to see these players that were in a different iteration that did kind of spurn the value of the new one get some sort of recognition, right? Right. right. You know, the legality aspects of this are really making this hard for both parties to kind of get their way. And you almost want, I almost wish that one just does bow to the other Mm. and say, okay, let's play the season. We'll get the history over here. Everybody's happy. We move on to a continuation, but that's just not how it's playing out. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, one way or another, I think it gets settled. Like I said, I don't see, I don't see this as likely that we don't see Fox retain the USFL trademarks and the team names. What I won't say, because I don't know, I'm not a lawyer, but I, I mean, it is very possible that there's, there's some, some type of settlement out of court. I think, and quite honestly, I think that's maybe likely if we see anything at all, if it doesn't get thrown out of court, if anything, Fox might just want it to go away. Right. We're talking about a multi-billion dollar uh, company here. Now, again, they're not just, they're, they're not going to sit, take it laying down though. Right. The, I mean, no. Fox has their own lawyers, which we did get a statement from. We, we, I mean, I'll tell you this. I was actually surprised. I was telling you about this on discord in our own private area that I had reached out to the league for a comment. And generally, generally with ongoing litigation, you don't get anything, but we did, we did. They were actually able to supply us something. So David Bernstein, David Bernstein, uh, Deba Voice and Plimpkin Council of the Fox Sports and USFL Enterprises. And I apologize. I probably got one of those names wrong in there. 
But you know the drill already if you've been listening to the show. Here's what they had to say. And I mean, the, I think this it sums up how, at least how I feel, how a lot of the USFL diehards feel. And at least we're seeing the company on the same page here. The lawsuit filed yesterday, or at least the other day, by an entity, entity formed just a week ago is completely without merit. The new USFL registered, registered its intellectual property rights in 2011 and is excited to launch games on schedule on April 16th. The 11th hour attempt to extract value from ex the exciting new USFL is utterly frivolous and we're exploring all options for readiness or redress. Mm -hmm. I apologize. But it's, uh, it is good. I think it's very important that Fox responded to this because here's, here's we've already seen how fast the rumor mill can start, right? If on a Monday or Tuesday, I can't remember when the, the lawsuit news came, but earlier this week, if that dropped and we're still sitting here today, three, four days later, you know all the usual suspects and it, just the people that hate on everything online would be running with it endless. What What's going on in the background is Fox. We would probably hear stories popping up of, Fox is getting ready to get rid of it and all sorts of things. So just by this one <laughs> statement alone, this one statement alone at least quells that. And I mean, it at least shows their stance on the situation. And in my opinion, they're coming at it strong. And I think it's important that you come sure. at it strong. If you come in backtracking, like you brought up earlier, they're, they're actively putting out content on social media. If they had stopped, if they didn't put out a comment, it's those types of things, even if it means nothing, even if it means nothing, they get people to start questioning. And once people start questioning people's minds, imaginations, they can run a while real quick. So I think, I think this is smart by the league. I like it. Your thoughts. I mean, I, I went, I, I've been rambling yeah. on this. I have a lot. Well, I, well real, actually, sorry, yeah. real quick before I bounce over to you. I have so many speculation zone ideas in my head that I'm, I'm just keeping them bottled. But maybe one day, guys, maybe one day when this is all over, I'll talk about them. So now I'm well, sorry, Zach, I don't, back to I don't, you. I don't knock you for for that. I did the same thing just a bit ago, but it's it's because there's just a lot to unpack with what they're trying with what both sides are trying to show here. And I, you know, and I and what both strategies are. You know, I, I even I'll even go back with uh Larry Zonka, you know, he's been quoted a lot with this. Um mm -hmm. that is it for the for the original crowd you know, in terms of that side where he's, where his whole, ta his whole like big, you know, look at the camera, go, Oh, I look how they messed up is going, well, if they didn't think there was value in it, why did they want it so bad? Right. That, that quote's been going around the internet, like wildfire in USFL circles, you know, and articles in particular have been quoting it like crazy. Any of the main ones, they put that in. And yeah, sure. That's fair. You know, but like my, my thing right back on that quote is, well, if there was value in it, why don't you just pay the damn trademarks? Right. You know, I, I, I still, I think that's one thing that sticks to me because this is not a black and white issue. It's very much gray. Like we've said, but if I look at the black and white aspects of this whole thing, if these were so valuable and they've been just sitting around and you were, you're operating like a business, wouldn't the business pick them up? Like I, well, that, that's the thing that kills me. You know, it's not like, you know, they hit the two thousands, like the mid two thousands and had this like back and forth where some leagues wanted it and others. Like we're talking like the late eighties, the early, like this expired in the early nineties. Right. It's been sitting there. Well, I mean, if they, if it was a business, why aren't you picking these up? That's, that's my whole side as a fan, mm -hmm. Well, you know, here's and the, for either one, here's the real yeah. situation and whether it was on purpose or not, cause I don't think it was, but. Um, in all reality, they may have not been granted the trademarks. And that, again, that's fair. Using again, you have to show an active use. And again, just opening a t-shirt company isn't gonna cut it. It isn't mm -hmm. gonna cut it, right? I mean, we've seen this in other avenues as well. I mean, using professional wrestling as an example, it was just a couple of years ago that AEW, their top competition, they bought the rights to bash at the beach. And what could okay. WWE do about it? Nothing. Did they buy it because the name had value? Hell yeah, they did. Hell yeah, they did. And you mm -hmm. know how they solved it? They solved it in the back room. And honestly, Vince McMahon paid them money for it. So <laughs> if that's, I mean, I, I, to me, that's a very comparable thing here because we're talking about 
a, 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 a an asset or so, uh, something of that nature that has value. Again, Bash at the sure. Beach, if you look back again at wrestling, we're going out of different avenues here, but that was a major event for one of their competitors at the time. WWE ended up buying them. They ran their own Bash at the Beach pay-per-view. So I, I would say they have double stake of claim to that saying, well, somebody that we bought used it and we used it and they mm-hmm. still weren't able to get it without having to pay the other group money, which in this case would be the real USFL having to pay up. Now, I, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer, but right. I, I see an apples to apples situation there. Well, and even going back to we're in the uh, motion for preliminary injunction about page 18. Uh, it's like our, there's a section E of the section that is referenced here is the, oh, I'm there it is. Uh, it's about the, the USFL owners pushback is what the sub is what it's titled. Mm. Um, but it's page 18. If you look at the, the preliminary injunction for this, basically it's highlighted that in Ju- on July 14th, Steve Bearhart and exec Fox sports, executive vice president, Larry Jones had a sit down meeting. And this was pretty much after the main big announcement on television happened where you had Doug Flutie with the general's hat, you know, announcing, saying it was back. I don't know what was all said there. No one really does. And I don't think it's going to fully say, but you know, here's what, here's what this section is. I'll, I'll read it here. It says, quote, on the same day of Fox's announcement, Mr. Earhart is quoted in the Philadelphia Inquirer regarding Fox's illegal attempt to relaunch the league. Uh, Earhart, let's see. Okay, so there we go. And then days late, quote, again, days later, Mr. Earhart directly called Fox Sports Executive Vice President Larry Jones to complain of Fox's illegal use of the USFL marks and explain the USFL had never ceased using the marks. At a July 24 or July 14th, 2021 in-person meeting, here's the kicker here, Mr. Jones dismissed Mr. Earhart's complaints, stating that Fox was not interested in further discussion. I don't know what those discussions are, mm-hmm. but if you're talking the bash, like comparing the bash of the beach p- portion, I would have assumed that's where, the, and again, this is alleged. I, right, I, right. I have to put allegedly, I would assume that's where that would have taken place if it was going to happen. And since then it's kind of been. I'm assuming back, back end behind the scenes work with air with Mr. Steve Earhart and company on, well, what's our avenues if we're not going to get. And again, allegedly, if we're not going to get our bone, a bone thrown to us, if that's what happened on July 14th, what do we do? Right. And here we are now. So maybe this is all avoidable. If that is, if that takes place back in July, it sounds like if you put like page, like I said, page 18 kind of puts it that way, that maybe this could have been avoided. Right. And we could not see this pop up this week. I'll say this. Isn't it amazing how no matter what, spring football is always interesting. There's always something. Like, yes. again, it, it just there's <laughs> always something that just, it, it's like over the top. It's over the top always. I mean, the to me, I mean, other than this, the wheel is moving so smooth I hope, I don't know, but I, my, my feeling is this doesn't, this doesn't stop us from April 16th. So I, I don't, yeah. some have pontificated in the discord that, I mean, worst case scenario, Fox, I mean, they could still play football, right? Nobody's saying they can't play football, but Correct. they could be stopped from using the names and logos. I don't think that'll happen. And again, I don't think that's the goal here. I don't think it really is the goal here from, from the other party. I think. I think they want what they feel is owed to them for keeping this legacy alive and in their minds, right? The history portion that, that that's the whole thing. And and again, the history part of it has been kind of talked about in fan circles in, you know, media circles since the beginning, you know, whether it's being about bringing it back from the dead, whether now it's about, you know, well, why aren't we using it? Cause I mean, even like I'll go, I'll reference Jeff Perlman's, you know, dead spin write up where it's like, I like, he put in basically going, I was waiting for them to talk about, you know, Sam mill, Sam mills getting, mm-hmm. you know, put in the pro football hall of fame and that the league was going to do something. And I waited till day one, day two, and now it's day 20. I'm like, okay, I get it. You know, but this is what they're stuck in. Right. They, they pit the league you can see pivoted. They are trying to, and they've said in press releases since. They are not associated with that league. So 
of course they can't use the history mm-hmm. that I think mm-hmm. that, you know, that that's something that has to be specified. Like if they made this pivot, right, right, right. But now it's going to be part of this injunction. If things go forward the way they do, it still can be thrown out. Like that's the thing that I think people are, it sounds like many are assuming is going to happen at least is based on readings that everyone's done. Everybody's got an opinion at, like we do. I, well, that's but, the thing. And at the end of the day, that's know. all it is. It is all opinions, even from, even from lawyers. Right. Because I mean, exactly. if you find enough lawyers, you're going to have a disagreement. I mean, and it probably isn't going to take a lot of lawyers. You know, I know. I, I, know. I mean, I, I refer, I referenced uh, Dar- Darren he- Heitner's, you know, write up on above the law, which again, a great write up, but again, it's, this isn't the court and anything interpretation and argument essentially who has the best case still is up for grabs. Right. That at the end of the day, March 16th, you're going to see if this stays or not. I'll tell you both sides will get both sides will get their day. It's going to be a hell of a topic for us to talk about there. I think that'll be episode 11, right? Episode 11. We're in. Yeah. I mean, that'll be, that'll be two weeks from shows from now. So, and we even have a second, we have the supplemental draft during then, but again, you have to stay status quo. You know, that's, that is from a PR perspective. You have to be calm as hell with this going on by the scenes, the lawyers will take care of it. Right. That's how well, that's exactly it's it. looked at. Well, and that's at the end of the day, it's not my job. It's not Brian Wood's job. It's not Edward Hartman's job. It's not even their lowest level employees job. Mm-hmm. It is the job of the Fox lawyers. And I mean, I'm going to assume that they have a very good legal team. I'm just going right. to go out on a limb and say that a major broadcast company has a good legal team. Now, some some people might like that. Some people might not like that. But in this situation, I think that's very helpful for our case. So I'm happy with it. Correct. Well, let's be frank too. I want to. I want to. You got to put this out here, uh, just because you know, Fox had to have done. We've said this before on the show and in other other places. Fox had to have done homework going in. They, this is the thing. They're the ones driving this. They're the ones that are now the main spearheads doing this project. Brian Woods and the spring league were the ones that originally picked up the marks, which is going to be a big focus on this beginning and inju- beginning hearings and motion for injunction here. But the thing is they had to research that they had to get the background saying, okay, do you really have this? Is this something you really legally have standing on and we can move forward? Great. Two thumbs up. Now we can go forward with that and announce this league. And you have to imagine that they know this was a possible. I would think this would have been known in the background. Mm-hmm. Like this could be a possibility well, if that talk didn't go well between Jones and Earhart, we might be talking about an LLC coming out of the blue and trying to slap us with something like this. That's exactly right. Well, yeah, and, and I would, I would even say, even if they had done their due diligence after, if that conversation happened, I'm just going to say that again, if the conversation happened after that, I guarantee you, they got the legal team on that and said, do me a favor. Cross the T's, dot the I's, just double check anything. Is there anything that could go wrong? Because quite honestly, there's been a lot of time between July and now. And if there was going to be an issue, in my opinion, I think they would have already steered course, right? I think we would have seen that pivot, but we haven't. I I want to bring up, you said Earl, you said uh, as we were a little few minutes ago into this conversation about, uh, you know, the criticism portion of it, Mm -hmm. like the public PR, you know, we've talked on this show about like how spring leagues, they get, you know, that drama people just like sit here and wait for it to happen. You know, Mm -hmm. um, I think one of my favorite instances of a, of an organization waiting for that, you know, I know ESPN doesn't invest has, isn't invested in this, but I think everybody got a good laugh when ESPN out of the blue is like, Oh, lawsuit. Right. Let's let's write something on this. You know, other stuff's happened. A drafts happen. Little coverage. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we've had uniforms, a little coverage lawsuit. Oh, we got to write something up. This will be some great clicks. And I I don't like, I don't like throwing shade at websites and often that's not my MO. That's neither of us really like that MO mm -hmm. on a podcast level, but it's hilarious how it's, something bad with the spring league is big enough to where it's like, we're going to get the clicks with this. Right. Right. <laughs> because this is everyone, because to them, it's probably like everyone likes a train wreck. Right. Well, and not to <laughs> mention they're probably, they're probably, yeah. well, they're probably <laughs> in bed with the XFL too, which that doesn't hurt. And which is very reminiscent. I mean, just to say both sides of the fence, yeah, it's very, very reminiscent of what we saw from pro football talk and the XFL. Uh, <laughs> so to be fair, I mean, this is this is nothing new. Pro football talk, at least with the XFL days, 
not always the most positive articles. Uh, now I, I mean, so now we're seeing that with with ESPN. So it is, it is always funny to watch that. I do try to call it down the middle. I'll tell you this, and maybe it doesn't seem like it, but if I looked at this lawsuit and I really was like, oh, I mean, I wouldn't be able, I wouldn't feel good with myself coming on here and saying that I feel fine. I would have to say. Mm-hmm. Prepare yourselves. Prepare yourselves for the worst. But I, I, don't, I really don't see that situation coming through. Again, maybe money changes hands. I think that's the worst that happens. I don't want to even speculate on how big or small that number could be. But, I, I, I mean, right. to me, that's the worst-case scenario. Best-case scenario gets thrown out. Worst case scenario, money changes hands. That that's a flip of the coin where I'm like, I I respect the understanding of like their writing of the original group writing, you know, the history we have and all this. But on the flip end of the coin, that's where I'm going. This part of saying, well, we've shown in our work and we're looking like we're legitimately putting an organization together. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're talking about the legacy, I mean, they're trying to put a league together that has. I think gotten a lot of hurdles covered on saying, what else do you want us to do? You know, I mean, they did a legitimate draft. They have everything in order. They got good. They have players that are young guns with diamonds in the rough, good quality. They've stated what they are and they got the execs to back it. That's the part of it where I'm like, dang, man, that sucks seeing this. Right. right, right. You know, cause yeah, the history, I get it, but Jesus, you're going to, you might, you might be the force that blocks this. I feel, I understand you get your ownership rights and all that. You know, that's an important thing. I, I recommend you fight for stuff that is yours, Right. but it just sucks when like, as a fan, you're sitting here and you're like, well, baseball might be having an issue. <laughs> and now I have this league that if it comes down to one day on March 16th, that a judge basically says, yep, stop the presses. I have to sit here and slump down and go sigh, Dude, <laughs> but no I joke. don't. Yeah. No joke. I'm sending that judge an edible arrangements from me. And I'm going to say, you know, actually, I'm, I might have to cut that out of the podcast. I don't know if I can legally say that. I'm joking, of course, but just, to, I, I might have to do my own research. I'm not sending an edible arrangements to the judge in this trial. Let me just go on record as saying that uh, there's no bribery. There may be no curtain in the USFL podcast, but there's definitely no bribery. So I, a joke. I'm not it's doing joke. that. It's a joke. But if you do get medical arrangements, I mean, hey, sign you up. <laughs> you <know? laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> At the end of the day, a lot of us want to see this, this iteration play. I think a lot of us have been convinced that they are trying to run this like an actual league and that this isn't trying to get something quick. We've, there's been a lot of proof they've had to put in, you know, but legally that doesn't apply. Opinions of what we want to see doesn't apply on a legal basis. This is just me, me and you stating that because I want to see him play. Yeah. You know, I, I want to see him play. Well, the, and I think there's an avenue for that in the history that you can honor in both ways. Right on. You'll figure out. Right on. Well, the last thing I want to see is this turn into a long-term thing, right? Sure. Because, I, I mean, I, I, still at the end of the day, even if it becomes a long-term thing, I still think Fox uses the lo- names and logos, but it does put in a situation if for whatever reason something crazy happens and there is some problems at the end, where then you have to rename after playing, then that, man, that's a bummer. But I don't think it's going to get there. I think I think this will get sorted. And, I mean, we're going to be talking about it in a couple of weeks. And I'm, just at the rate we've been getting details on this bad boy, it's been less than a week. And, look, we've been talking, I think, over a half hour on this. So we <laughs> might have a lot more details next week, but definitely two weeks from today. Keep, keep a close eye. We're, 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 I mean, that trial is going to already happen. So we're, we're going to know something. We're going to know something. We not, might not know a decision, but we'll know something. It's. I'll tell you one thing just because I'm laughing just on side note. It's at least not going to be as slow as that McMahon and uh, Oliver Luck trial. Jesus oh, my Christ. God. Yeah. Uh, the fact that we're and I, I don't mean to go off the skew just because of the fact we're talking legal system stuff like 
we're now getting a date <laughs> to talk about that whole payment issue, and it's been almost two years. <laughs> like, Dude, that good one. Lord. <laughs> I'm actually, that's like one thing I'm happy about. Is I'm like, thank God we have a resolution coming like in two weeks and getting this accelerated. I know. It's, it, or at least something that'll be moving that way. Like, Jesus like, Christ. I mean, Oliver Luck's probably pretty dang happy too. That's, what is he, 25 <laughs> milli he's looking for? That's, that's yeah, no it's chunk a of money. little chunk of change over there. And I mean, I will pontificate. I will. I don't care. Uh, in my opinion, in my opinion, I think Oliver Luck is owed his money. Uh, mm-hmm. I think, uh, I mean, realistically, sorry to go off subject. I, mm-hmm. I, we're flipping Columbo today. Get over it. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't even know what's going on anymore. Uh, okay. So anyway, the Oliver Luck trial. They they let him go. I think the day before or two days before they filed bankruptcy. That's yeah. that's cold. That's cold. All because they found out he was texting somebody on his work phone. <laughs> I mean, oh You'll my get, goodness. Say, XFL wise, we'll get those juicy details. But I'm just again, I just you know because I'm just that's one thing I'm happy with is like it's the least accelerated <laughs> where we'll get like a definitive yes or no on how this will run. You know. And even like, and I'll, last thing with this, like even the, even if it's like dismissed from court, you know, there's probably other avenues they can, that even the real USFL LLC can take to keep moving and trying to get this slowed down. The thing is, is if they get thrown out of court right now, then we'll see the league play on a normal schedule. Most likely if it doesn't, then we're going to be starting about talk about delays and speculation and zones and speculation zone type of type of jargon. Like that's about it. <laughs> Yep. That's about it. But we'll keep you posted. I mean, I, I, I'm hopefully, hopefully this goes pretty smooth. If it doesn't go smooth, I'm sure we can get the information. We'll definitely be talking about what we can f- confirm or speculate. And we, I think we do a pretty good job of discerning between the two mm-hmm. uh, because I, I think that's important to, I do think it's important to make sure that people know, I, you know, I earlier I joked about joking, but I think that is important, right? We do speculate. Right. Well, I want to know you're in right. the speculation zone. But one thing we don't have to speculate about, I think we I think we beat that one dry. I don't know we, if there's any did. more on the lawsuit. So let's talk yeah. about some fun. Oh, go yeah, on. Th- this is where we introduce the meanwhile yeah. in, the, <laughs> in the in the normal setting. Yeah, back, you know? to, back to what we were in our regularly scheduled program. Columbo's <laughs> over. Let's talk about the good stuff next week. Next week. It feels like we just got done talking draft. Well, we're talking draft again. We have the Ooh. USFL supplemental draft coming up March 10th. March 10th. And we actually have a couple names to confirm. So the first one, we announced this one back on Monday. Brandon Silvers, former quarterback for the Seattle Dragons, former quarterback in the Spring League, which the dude balled out in that last year of the Spring League. I mean, I was looking at some of his stats. He only played half of the games, right? It was one of those teams Mm -hmm. where he played either the first half or the second half. And on two occasions, on two occasions, he got three touchdowns in a half. Nine total touchdowns over the year playing half of the games. Right. Boom. And so there, there's, a, there's a couple, I mean, there's, again, it's always interesting. That, but from what I'm told, from what I'm told, there may have just been some type of clerical error. Uh, from what I understand, there were coaches that were looking to pick him up in the inaugural draft, in the main draft. But for really? one reason or another, his name wasn't on that list. So it's an interesting, and I, I mean, the details are very slim, but I'll tell you this, the person who told me that I trust, I okay. trust. Uh, I mean, I've worked with a, a bunch of people in the past and this is one I've never been steered wrong. So there, there might be more to that story. Uh, so I'll preface that there. All I can say is I, I would expect him to get picked up then. If there were coaches that were actively interested then and having them in that supplemental draft, I think he gets picked up. Sure. Silvers has been a name that's been kind of around these league around many of these leagues now. I mean, the Alliance American Football, XFL, the TSL, he had he did a great job coming in, relieving relieving Kevin Anderson in there mm-hmm. during his time. He was on the Conquerors. So yeah, I mean, the the guy has a name set in these type of leagues. You know, I was kind of, sub- I didn't have him pegged as 
I wasn't hundred percent sure if he'd go because of just like some of the other names I thought was going to go at least maybe the first round. Maybe he was like a 12th round pick, but obviously that didn't happen. And there's guys that are still left out that are, you know, for supplemental draft pickups that will hopefully see that we thought were going to go mm-hmm. in the main draft. And then of course, the other thing that's come to play that people start talking about too, is like, well, you know, the contract situation and the XFL looming over, like, did some people wait? Did some people, you know, last minute decide that maybe this wasn't the avenue, you know, that, that we don't know that speculation mm-hmm. zone thing right, right. I'm throwing out there, but this is stuff that goes into effect with the supplemental draft where you have to think about, you know, what guys will be there. And again, same deal as the second verse, same as the first, we don't know the whole pool even for this. And right now, not exactly a hundred percent on the format for that either. I mean, credit supplemental drafts are, you know, they're less hyped up. They're not, they're more for guys. You're padding your roster. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, mo- you're most likely getting either pieces like, for example, long snappers, punters, some, some positions that guys, pa- that teams passed on for compensatory picks, or you're getting like practice squad, you know, right. I'm, I'm getting pieces that maybe it's reserves and we're talking 45 full total guys. We're definitely looking at this supplemental as a really hard line reserve draft. Oh, right. On. You know, they right really on. have to be careful with who they look at. So details are probably going to come out I, the, the, coming this week. I mean, they should. Mm-hmm. And we hope so. you know, there's, there's hints that we we've hit, we've been hearing. They might, might cover it like the main draft. So and that's There's possibility we everybody. can see it like that. It's good yes, news it for is. everybody because if they do, if they do, I think we could say here, we don't know if this happened for sure, but if there is some extra coverage, we're going live again. We're going to go live. We'll communicate the time, the start time, because I don't know that right now, and I don't even know if we're going to go live. But if if we do have some supplemental draft information going on next week, I think we go live Thursday. That'll t- that'll be our episode 10. I think that's... That would be. I think that I think we just go live anyway if maybe, they don't. Maybe, and, yeah. Live episode ten, so just, just for the heck of it, so that that'd be perfect. So yeah, stay tuned. Well, let me we'll pontificate. We'll 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 iron out the details. But sometime this weekend, as long as you're following USFL podcast on your favorite social media platform or choice, you'll get the skinny. And I mean, if you hit the bell, which will build morale, you'll get an alert if we do schedule a live stream. But look forward to that because I think I think March tenth. It's our 10th show, mm-hmm. supplemental draft. I think we do go live. I think we the do stars go live. are light. You didn't even think of it that way. You know, 10-10. Sign and us up. Not, this is an October 10th. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 10th yeah. show. Day is the 10th of March. You, you get what I'm talking about. That would be pretty good. So we're 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 definitely debating that. Um, we had one other one we got that was confirmed, too. And I'll, I'll admit a familiar name with the XFL. Also has been the TSL mm-hmm. with the Aviators. Um, he actually was signing up to be in the arena scene recently. Cause I, I know he's going to be with the Orlando predators, but now he's in the USFL draft. So, you know, that'll be his primary unless he doesn't get picked up is uh, Jeremiah Spicer, who was with the uh, XFL's Los Angeles wildcats back at the time. Um, he has definitely made his story very well known, um, kind of rising up to go play, go play. Um, you know, he's from the Los Angeles area. So. Yeah. Um, he has a fascinating very story. Name. Fascinating yeah. story. I'm sure. Well, I mean, the XFL did a pretty good job of communicating that story out. But I'll tell you this even before the XFL draft, I did, a, I interviewed him years ago, years ago. And mm-hmm. I mean, he has an incredible story. Essentially, he was homeless when he was a child yeah. and worked his way up, for, like I said, from the streets to cleats, dude. He worked his way up, went to a community college. And I mean, he's, we've seen him in a couple of these leagues now. And from what I tell, from what I'm told, he's even stronger, bigger than he was before, right? He's been really That's taking good. the opportunity, especially since that XFL trip and kind of what happened over there, to kind of work work on his skills. And I, I mean, I could see him getting picked up here. I mean, this seems like a perfect pit for a supplemental draft. I mean, I'm a little surprised he didn't make it in the main draft. So I, I don't, I, I could see him getting picked up here. And I think, I mean, looking at some of his highlight tapes, I think he's a good pick for any of the, any of the teams that are looking for one of those big, strong dudes on defense. Mm-hmm. Well, of course. Well, now it's funny. I got to bring this up as well. Um, if you were in the main draft and you're in that pool that they accepted in, you are also still qualified for the supplemental. So mm-hmm. keep that in mind. So like the list that we had set up for USFL newsroom, that still applies for those that didn't get picked up. And for those that have been saying since then that they have contracts or that we knew at contracts, they've been stating like, 
I'm also in there. So like a Kalias Robertson tight end, we've been looking at him, you know, uh, we talk like guys like, uh, Zimbalas Williams as well, who has been definitely promoting his brand out there. You know, we're looking at him guys like from arena scene that I've been following or me or Jim Mernier have been following with like uh, Trayvon shorts, Desmond Maxwell, some other people. I'm just listing some names, but if you were essentially, if you were qualified and had that contract for the first, for the first regular draft, you are essentially set up for the supplemental. So mm. you could get your phone call March 10th. You just have to be ready and hope that you have a spot and they want you. Right on. That's the thing. Right on. Which, I, I mean, there's a lot of guys. Like, there's a lot of them that you mentioned. I, I can't wait to see their names get called up there. I, I can't wait to just see who who the rest of these teams are as they get built out. So, again, yeah, I think, I think it's pretty – we'll figure it out. But I think we're going to go live next Thursday for all the reasons we mentioned above. I'm excited about the supplemental draft. At least it gives us something else to talk about than the 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 annoying lawsuit news that we had to bear through yeah. earlier, right? Because I mean, <laughs> I'm this now. This is my kind of stuff. I'm a positive kind of guy. I'm a good news guy. So I'll bear with the the the, the bad subjects. But now we got the good subjects. But we, we oh, go on. Say you have something. Well, I was I was about to say. Um, I definitely am up for the same. You know, positive train. Let's keep this thing a moving. Um, and I just, I'm just really just combining this because of the fact that both these kind of touch the same with player, at least evaluation, player signings, and all that. Um, and Adam Schefter talking about the league, which for those that follow the USFL, Adam Schefter has said almost nothing about the USFL. He, he, he's obviously ESPN's NFL insider. Mm -hmm. um, he's one of the most famous insiders, journalistic guys for football. And out of the blue this week, he comes out and goes, the USFL is having a combine March 19th through 21st. And we just, everyone just had to stop and go, what do you mean combine? Right. Excuse me. The draft me? already happened, combine? right? <laughs> and then of course you got good. Thank God for Ben Fisher coming in from sports business journal going, guys, it's not a combine. It's essentially a free agent tryout. And I'm like, that makes, we're like, geez, that makes so much more sense. I'm just like, my main thing out of this is like, first, great that they're doing that. I guess, you know, again, you need to short rosters. You're going to be talking about possible injuries, guys that you'll want to have ready to go. that You can sign and know there'll be quality guys you want in your roster out of the gate. So that's the great part of that. But secondly, my other reaction is again, why is Adam Schefter reporting this? I he's done, he's done little to nothing on the USFL. And all of a sudden he throws that in there. I was just very confused. Well, it that was, that was my thing with this whole thing. It was very confused. Like others were, it was, well, the really confusing part for me, because one, I mean, you see Adam Schefter say it. So you're like, I mean, it's gotta be right. 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 <laughs> I mean, he, there's only a, a, maybe once or twice. I, the, he may have been off and even then he was on, but there was a detail missing. Right. Uh, the, the interesting part of all this to me is, I mean, training camp kicks off the 21st, this was scheduled for the 19th and the 20th. And I'm like, right. How are they? And so, yeah, with the free agent tryout, that makes a little bit more sense. Uh, I mean, there was definitely speculation zone that maybe the league was thinking about expanding those rosters out, but I think it was just a little misconfusion. I'm curious where he got the news from. I do have mm -hmm. some speculation zone. Again, it, it ties a whole bunch of things together. You know that Charlie Kelly, it's always sunny in Philadelphia meme of him in the mail room. Right. That's what I feel <laughs> like in my head. But I, again, I'm going to keep the speculation to myself because I think it's so it's too speculation zone. If that's even a thing, it's like triple quadruple speculation zone. <laughs> we might be going so a little too far. We're gonna, we can't get pulled back out. Yeah, we're going to, we're <laughs> not, we're not going that deep, but I will say, so we have, the draft, we know a good group of players. We have the supplemental draft coming up. So we might see some surprises, though, in this last group of guys as we roll into training camp. And I think that's pretty neat. Again, I don't expect any, like, big names. You're not going to get, like, a Shea Patterson out of this one, maybe. But I, there's probably going to be a name or two that maybe we see. Maybe even guys that are in the supplemental draft that are even invited here so they have an opportunity to scout them in person. Right? right. Because we kind of talked oh, yeah. about that before. I mean, the scouting, a lot of it, uh, you would assume is based on tape, tape, right? And maybe there's a guy they're looking at tape from the XFL, man, that was two years ago now. So they just to put them at ease. Hey, can you just come out, throw the ball, run the ball, dodge something, just show us 
just show us that you're mobile. Show us that you haven't been eating Burger King for two years. And, you know, <laughs> and again, it, it might very well be the scenario on some of these guys here. Unfortunate, too, because a lot of it is just circumstances. Had the illness we shall not name happened, none of this would have ever been a problem. Um, I feel that way about college, too. I mean, those are the guys, they got really got screwed. Some of those, like, you look at March Madness. I mean, there's, there's like a whole class of guys that lost out on their moment. Right, that right. Cinderella team. I mean, they, anyway, we're getting way off, way off topic. But this is why I love opportunities. That's why I love March Madness, which is coming up. We got to do brackets, by the way. Uh, but it's coming <laughs> up. I'm getting excited about that. I'm getting excited about new players. But you know what I love about March Madness? Do you know what I really love? And I, I'm sad that I live where I do now because it's not as close. But uh, I know what you're saying. Yes. Every year, every year during March Madness, when I used to live in Arizona, I used to do that four-hour road trip up to Las Vegas to gamble. <laughs> and it was, I mean, it was fun. And I'll honestly, for the folks that know, Laughlin is better than Las Vegas. I call it old man Vegas. It's okay. just imagine a room that hasn't had, that, that has had cigarette smoke in it constantly for the last 45 years and people that haven't left the room puffing those cigarettes for the last 45 years. It's the most magical experience. I mean, if you want a f <laughs> either the funniest or saddest story ever, just sit at a bar at a casino in Laughlin, and somewhere in there, some old man's going to be up there and say, let me tell you something. I got drafted twice in one year, one by Major League Baseball, the other by the U.S. government. And that's a real story. That is a real story and one of my favorite stories. That's real. Happy and sad. Yeah, hey, oh, dude, you got to, you were drafted by the, oh, you got drafted by the government the same, oh. So, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, what? Laughlin, magic, it's like the opposite. It's actually the opposite of Disney World. The, the world's most un- happiest place but in Good a funny God. it's it, oh it's it's great maybe i'm an old man at heart i love laughlin but that does take us to our next subject oh well, i do <laughs> like vegas and well, vegas I'm, is fun yeah you know, i do like vegas and at least you're gonna be able to in vegas gamble on the usfl we got official stuff about the gambling which was gonna come up at some point because fox loves their gambling oh yeah on any of their sports it was gonna happen just not everywhere, though. Not everywhere. A lot of places. Not everywhere yet. Not everywhere. Well, it was interesting, right? The way that this news came out because it actually was Wednesday. DraftKings confirmed they were actually the first to confirm that uh, yes. the first sports book to confirm they're going to offer uh, offer betting lines for the USFL. Not a lot of details. Just we're going to do it. A lot of speculation on what types of bets and this and that. And blah 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 blah. And that came just to uh, where credit is credit due. Sportsbook review that they're the f they're the first ones to kind of make that news official. Their guys mm -hmm. talked to DraftKings and got a statement from them. So I mean that was the first one. But then it was a day later. It was a day later that we got an official press release from the USFL, and it wasn't necessarily around who the providers were going to be, but more so where you're going to be able to wager these bets so far, so far. So right now we're at 15, two of which are States that have USFL teams, three teams total though, three teams total. So mm -hmm. we have Iowa, New Jersey, Oregon, Pennsylvania. So the two teams there, West Virginia, Tudor world, what's up. Uh, and those are all States that require a regulatory approval for new leagues. Right. But then we also have Connecticut, Delaware, Nevada, which is the big one. I mean, that's the big one. New Hampshire, New Mexico, North Carolina, North D Dakota, Rhode Island, South Dakota and Wisconsin. So I think there's a couple notable ones missing. I, I'm, I'm a little surprised Arizona's not in there. Um, yeah. Louisiana is not in there as well. Uh, but honestly, I think Vegas is the big one. Realistically, I mean. A majority of the bets, I know that a lot of states are now offering sports betting and online gambling, things like that. But even then, and I don't know, but I would say a majority of the big bets are happening in Vegas. And I mean, there's no odd like a Vegas odd. I'll tell you that. And there ain't, yeah. You ain't getting the same odds on a Bodog or whatever. What is it? Bovada out here? Sorry. <laughs> Bodog. That's old school. Bodog. now. That's up in Canada. <laughs> eh? But anyway, 
it, we're getting it. We're getting it. And honestly, so in the press release, they did kind of allude to there. There is a certain uh, there's a certain group of approved betting vendors where at least we did con- get confirmed. I mean, naturally, Fox Bet. Of course, I mean, if Fox Bet wasn't going to offer lines, then I don't even know. I don't even know what I would think there. Uh, but then we also <laughs> got draft. Could you imagine if that didn't happen? Like you got you got your two you got your two groups in Los Angeles, like one across the hall, kind of going. Hey, yeah. What the hell you doing? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that would be hilarious to me. Just I don't know, comedy in its in its own form that way. Uh, but yeah, it, it's a dirt. It's like a dirt to dirt type of moment, you know. Mm-hmm. For most people, is like it's gonna. It would be through Fox, DraftKings. I imagine you think FanDuel does oh, some yeah. action yeah, yeah. at some point. I mean, FanDuel is one of the most active at advertising in any state that has legalized gambling. I mean, you would think that they could make their own custom, like, here's the USFL. Want to bet on this game here tonight? <laughs> right, <laughs> Against right. the blah, 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 blah. Like, exactly. You know, what You know what stuck out to me with this is I know that it, it comes down to who approves and whatnot, but not, but of course, you, 15 states isn't every state that has some sort of authority. Even some states that have teams, like, for example, uh, Michigan did not approve mm-hmm. so far. I mean, I would assume speculation zone that can change. But as a preliminary, they are not on this list. <laughs> Michigan's know, that's a, a weird market one, that's not though. It. Michigan, and this is maybe, and, 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 this may have changed, but I, I lived there when they first finally started allowing casinos in the city. And that took them, I mean, they were trying for like 30 years to get casinos in that city because here's what would happen, Zach. I know this very well. So if you don't know, up in Canada, not only could you go to a casino when you're 19, you can drink when you're 19. Uh-huh. And so what would happen is, I mean, every Friday, Saturday night, that Windsor Tunnel going over to Ontario, Canada, was packed from dudes like me going to the casino. And so what they finally, they finally, finally, finally pushed it through where they brought casinos into the city. You could gamble at 18. Of course, you couldn't drink till 21. Uh, so mm-hmm. that kind of curbed that. But even then, they... When I lived in the state, they didn't even allow sports gambling. It was just uh, what are you, slot machines and cards and things like that. So I don't even know when they did start allowing sports wagering, but my wager, it was recent. And it seems like some of these people are dragging their feet on it. Um, and it is what it is. Michigan, though, no, nothing against them. I don't see that as mm-hmm. being a huge market. Right. right. I mean, I, I know I, I brought up Michigan as an example. I mean, if I wanted to continue that, like, for example, Florida right. legalized, but again, Tampa Bay, they're not going to right now, preliminary, they're not going to be in there. And there's even states, you know, we're talking in just this whole scheme of it, even, you know, that aren't even going to be able to do it, period. Like Alabama, <laughs> you know, that that's something that's been talked about this whole time with the, with the gambling mm-hmm. and that people have been bringing up more and more as we're getting closer to these details being released is, well, we can go watch the games there, but we can't gamble on these games. We'll probably hear about them on like, you know, live reads during the broadcasts, but you're going to sit there and go, ah, <laughs> you know, I learned this today. They don't even have a lottery in Alabama. I didn't even know that. Yeah, really? this is this I learned from uh, over on Reddit r slash USFL. So, hey, speaking of which, I'll give them a quick plug. If you guys are the reddening type, if you're a Redditor. You're you get into the snoo thing, whatever I don't know what they're calling, but go check out the 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 USFL Reddit. It's pretty good time. I've been I'll tell you this, Zach. I've been hanging out in the comments, talking to people. I mean, mm-hmm. they they got a pretty cool, cool community, and I'll be honest. There's a lot of guys in our Discord that have that either by coincidence or whatnot, but good so far, good fun community over there. So if you like Reddit, you like the USFL, go check them out. But uh, yeah, no, I learned that one on Reddit earlier. Uh, somebody had posted. Uh, the press release from the USFL. And uh, I can't remember his username. It's Magic to Beham or Beham Magic. I apologize. But he said something along the lines, well, it ain't going to happen here. I said, well, no, sports gambling's picking up traction. He said, bro, we don't even have the lottery. I said, oh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it won't. <laughs> Maybe it won't happen anytime soon then. You're right. You you're right. Maybe Go a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, I... I think that it will for them. It looks like it'll take some time. They are. I under, my understanding is that there have been discussions at least about it 
in the legislation in that state. But I mean, that's still far ways off. And I, and obviously this is, this has been a process, you know, it's, uh, it's very much one of those subjects where it goes by a state by state basis, a, you know, a different congressional group for each one, different legislation. I got to say, not congressional group legislation mm-hmm. has a different viewpoints on it and who's going to go what way on it. So it wasn't guaranteed yet in our current climate with sports gambling that we're going to get it, but that's, it's moving the right direction. At least you got 15 states to start. And like I'm saying here, speculation, but leaning on the side of probably will move that direction with the USFL continuing to stay. If the states that have teams have the betting, like I said, if Michigan in particular, I focus on, or like Florida, you think that the, those processes either are starting or they're moving that way. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just that these, they, they're like, okay, let's get this underway. 15 is pretty good start. Right. And then we can move from there. Well, absolutely. You know? absolutely. We're a new league too. Keep that in mind. You know, it's a new entity. It's not as established. Well, so you have to have some uncertainty for some places if you're wanting to jump in with those lines well, and such. And think even just three, three years ago, maybe even less, this list would have been way smaller because I mean, the, I mean it's yeah, rapidly growing that. the opportunities. I mean, realistically, like a lot of these states are like brand new to even allowing this sort of thing. Right. So, I mean, I, I think don't know speculation zone. I think some more States will sign on before the season kicks off and then rolling into that season two. I think we get some of the, the stragglers, right? Like I said, with Michigan, I don't know what their situation is now, but I assume there's probably just, just some weird paths and regulations that you need, need to get through. Florida is another one of those two. I'm, I'm actually a little bit surprised that they're not on, but again, I don't know. That's the weird thing with gambling laws because they're so they're, they're all like, they're all separate, right? So like, just because you have a casino doesn't mean you can gamble on sports or just because you're like in, in, in Houston, we can't have casinos, but we can have poker houses where you can pay money, but you can't win money, but you can win gift cards that can be turned into money. And like, <laughs> it's, I mean, I'll tell you this. I've gone to a couple of those poker houses in Houston. Very similar to Laughlin. <laughs> very similar to <laughs> Laughlin. If anybody has been to a poker room in Houston, uh, you'll know what I mean. Most of the people there hate me. Most of the, they, oh. they despise me. I'm too fun. I'm too happy. I have a good time. And honestly, I think it throws them off their game because I'm not a very good poker player. But I usually do very well just by going in there and being a loud mouth because I, I think the guys that take it so serious are like, they don't know they're everybody there is taking it serious. And I'm like, all right, guys, let's win some money. You know, <laughs> like they don't know how to take it, but me, I don't go a lot. Cause I don't like, I don't like gambling because they're, although I do win at some of these poker rooms, I'm not a hundred percent on my winnings and, uh, I, I'm cheap. Yeah. What can you do? I don't I want my money. So to each to each their own. Uh my own story. I got a mom that loves penny slots. Mm. Basically, that is exactly what I mean. My main shtick is I like roll, I like cranking the handle and seeing what comes out when it comes to get, getting it either digital or those or the Rolodex type of ones. Mm-hmm. That's my main shtick. That smoke a cigar, enjoy some drinks. That's how I am with the casinos. But I will be frank, sports gambling. This is like my year of like, let's try it out because I, oh. I've been more and more diving into the logistics of it with other shows. I'll say this. This is the year for me trying and, and, and probably USFL betting. Everyone, everyone from a legal perspective will like this. Just do it responsibly because I'll tell you, it is, there you go. it is easy to get sucked in. Like I said, that March madness going up to Vegas, man, you go there bright eyed, bushy tail. And I mean, half the time you come home, bright eyed, bushy tails. The other times you're like, boy, Correct. what do I tell my significant other? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, now, Hey, good cover. Because again, I'm not, I'm not saying to advocate for you to do that. That is your choice. That I'm just telling you what my thing is and what I'm looking at doing this year. Uh, cover myself. It's fun. <laughs> I mean, like, it is I'm, I'm, fun. <laughs> There's nothing more thrilling than placing a, a bet on the line, like even mid-game. I mean, uh, what's his name? Norm MacDonald, God rest his soul, one of the funniest yes, comedians. Indeed. He has one of the he has two of the greatest gambling stories ever. One, he was talking about lightning bets. Do you know what lightning bets are? 
Uh, kind of, but elaborate. So in his scenario, he did an over under. So essentially every, every basket after it earned him another thousand dollars. Okay. And so he watched this game and he made like $80,000 off this bet off of like a 10,000, not even a $10,000 bet. And it's, it was like him and Artie Lang just watching, watching this. It was like the biggest blowout in like sports history. And they had bet correctly on it. And the dude, oh, wow. the dude straight up went and took, cause he, he's rich and knew that he like, there's even having the money wouldn't even make him happy. Allegedly, he took the money to the ocean and just threw it in, like eighty thousand bucks, sixty thousand bucks, or something like that. Only Norm McDonald, only Norm McDonald. Um, <laughs> there's another great gambling story about him where he's like going on uh, the Conan O'Brien show and he's like in the in the green room and he had some money on a game. Same thing. It was a lightning bet, but it wasn't going his way. And like Conan's like oh, like going through the show and talking to him, and Conan thinks, oh, he's listening to what I say. And like after about ten minutes, Norm McDonald's I guess to move, you asshole! I'm losing all my money. <laughs> 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 Which I love, Norm McDonald. I mean, that was that was a shame earlier this year. But I swear, if you're t- if we're going to talk about sports gambling, we got to talk about Norm McDonald because he was he was he was one of the funniest guys, and I mean, he was into his sports gambling. You think you think he bets on the he would have bet on the USFL? Uh, he would have bet on anything. Yes, I, I, mean, I, I, I mean, think. I mean, I know. Okay, I. I even reading up on his legacy, that was something that comes up, you know, is something that he was known to do as like his own pastime, my understanding of that situation. So, hey, I mean, oh, <laughs> hypothetically, yeah. he'll probably he got a new league. He's he's up in heaven betting on stuff right now. I guarantee it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Hey. Sign him up. Sign him up. So <laughs> either way, if you were hoping to get some gambling, getting some wagers, it looks like it's coming, at least if you're in one of those 15 states, hopefully more on the way. We have a couple other topics to go over. This one, this one's an exciting one. I mean, we're we're ending it out strong here, but we have maybe some insight into I think a rule that a lot of people have been hoping to hear about, and that's the overtime rule. So, new Pittsburgh Maulers quarterback Kyle Laletta, he joined 93.7 the fan in Pittsburgh to kind of talk about the new league, talk about the new franchise, because this is a Pittsburgh radio show, kind of mm-hmm. get, get that conversation started. And about 10 minutes in to the interview, the host asked them about overtime specifically. And I, I was actually surprised that we got an answer. Usually with these types of things, you don't. You know, that's all I'll say. It seems, it seems, at least as of right now, that the league may be going for that two-point shootout. So not not exactly what the XFL did. The XFL was either a one, two, or three-point shootout, right? And so you could either go for one, two, or three from either the one, the two, or the five. Mm-hmm. This is going to be a two-point shootout, so I don't know where they're going to spot the ball. Uh, but I do like the idea. I do like the idea. So I know we never got to see overtime in the XFL, well, we might see something similar here in the USFL, and I think it's more likely. I mean, we did see a couple of games in overtime with Spring League, and the reason I say it's more likely is, I mean, in, in the XFL, there was a lot of opportunity to make sure it wasn't an overtime game because you had the opportunity to go for one, two, or three instead of an extra point, right? Mm-hmm. Right, and so yeah, having right. that opportunity, I mean, you could put it out of range. There's only a couple times in the XFL to where it got close. The big one was that Dragons Roughnecks game that to this day people are still mad about. But you know what? Maybe it's because I'm a ref. I think the refs got it right, even though they got it wrong. My Roughnecks won undefeated. <laughs> anyway, overtime in the USFL. I'm pretty amped about this. I want to get your thoughts, though. Do you think they're going far enough? Do you think, well, again, we don't know. This isn't confirmed, but this is what's being talked about. What are you thinking? Well, I mean, yeah, it's not even confirmed. And even the full rule book hasn't even been finalized that you want to talk about something along that line that I think people want to know is, Hey, what, what are these minor tweaks that are beside the, like, I think spec what they're saying is around 90, 95% NFL rules with some other adjustments. And this might be one of them. I, I really wanted it. If we're talking the XFL, since I really wanted to see it, you know, that, mm-hmm. that, dra- that dragons roughnecks game, the, the Vipers wildcats game that e- if it's not that that first one you mentioned, it's definitely the other one that people said, okay, what were we missing in coming after after that week? Mm-hmm. And that one was, I'm not joking, it was one pass away 
from being an overtime game. The Vipers were right on the goal line. Oh, yeah. They just had to score and hit the extra point, and we would have seen it. So we don't, we haven't seen shootout OT in hockey style yet. Do I want to see it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I like the concept, you know, if you're giving equal tries to both sides, this is something that the NFL is kind of, uh, at least trying to act on right now. And not in the same sense of shootout, mm. like hockey, more in the sense of how do we give it where overtime is equal opportunity. If both teams fought out and show that they were deserving to be in this o- extra stage of a game. So they're right now. That's the whole, their whole second talk is maybe we do both get one possession. The USFL, if this is truly the case, if Kyle Laletta is being honest and has given what is accurate information, which he could, mm-hmm. I mean, I think he is. I don't QBs, think he's doing it. These starting QBs, they've elaborated are very involved with their franchises. They have said they're, they are pillars. They are one of the top guys to help with building these rosters as well outside of the coaching staff. So yeah, you would think that there's a little bit let in, I want to see it because I want to see how much tension this can bring. I don't know how many tries you get from the two. I'm assume I'm, if I'm doing this two schools of thought, either you were to do it hockey style where, or soccer style, where you try and see who has the most at the end, you know, who's got the most shootout shootout attempts that were successful that hit the end, or you do it where it's a quick paced like NFL type where it's like, okay, I scored. Now you got to score. Right. And if you don't score, it's out like that. And that could be, that could almost be maybe too quick if you have it where it's one possession, one out. So that's the other school of thought mm-hmm. to be determined. For but sure. Right. Yeah. One of those two ways is probably what they would do in this instance. Probably about a field goal stif- or a, not a field goal, but an extra points length to do it mm-hmm. per possession. Yeah. That, it'll be fun. You know, it's funny in that interview too, he stresses that, you know, to get done on time is of the essence for the league, Mm -hmm. you know? So I almost wonder if, if it is two point shootout, maybe they do lean on the first person to not score aspect. Cause it does, it's a quick wrap, right? Right. You know, you're in a hub. You got to get the stuff done and set for another game, especially if it's on the same day. Right. Me personally, I hope it's like two out of three, something like that. At least we get a couple shots, but I could see it being, I, I could see what you're saying too, especially, I mean, if they're starting at the one or two yard line, you might even have to cap it at a certain point, right? right. The, the, you get you get some of these teams uh, with maybe some strong runners or good good receivers there. I mean, it's very feasible that you're going to score five times from the two point yard line, right? It, it, right? That's assuming that they even give you five chances, right? Maybe you know what I mean. So, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I'm I'm very interested to see what what lies in the rules. Like you said, what are those tweaks? More or less, it's going to be traditional football, which. Quite honestly, I think is what people are hoping for. But these types of tweaks, I think, do make it exciting. They make it fun. I, I, again, we never got to see it in the XFL. I'm really hoping we do see it in the USFL. If I were to add it, speculate um, when we're going to see the rules, I mean, training camp is coming up the 21st. I would be hard-pressed to think that we get it after that starts. I, I would say before the yeah. 21st. Speculation zone speculation zone i don't know i we don't know but i would assume we start hearing more about it in that time frame but i mean this is leading up to a good one two three bing bang boom of announcements so at least at the time of recording we haven't gotten the schedules yet now they're close from what i understand they're close like they they they, they could have came out they might even come out the day that this podcast comes out which is friday they, they, they're coming soon. It has to be any day now. Mm-hmm. Um, you, and, and really the deadline to most, I think should be training camp. You know, I would, I would assume again, I mean, again, we're, we've, we've put this thing in the, and others have in the speculation zone for a while now, because it's like, well, it's supposed to be coming out, you know? And I, I get the people's stresses on like, I want to go travel. I want to be able to know what my weekend's like. I've seen that. And I'm like, I'm with you. Yeah. You know, um, it's gotta be within (laughs) in the coming weeks. (laughs) If you're catching that part, you're laughing right now. Get signed up guys. If not going to, if not going to a discord server and just, uh, say in the coming weeks (laughs) for info, you'll know what we're talking about. Here's the thing. It's coming. We're not going to get to the starting. We're not going to get to kick off and not know the schedule. Right now. One thing, dude, I don't know how it took me this long to realize it. 
But April 16th is Easter weekend. You and I, buddy, we're spending Easter together. <laughs> so I know. <laughs> I didn't even know that until I was looking at our community newspaper the other day and they're doing a like an Easter dinner at our clubhouse. I said, April 17th. Oh my God. <laughs> I just looked at my wife. I said, I guess I'm going to be out of town for Easter. I'm sorry. What are the odds? So, but it'll be fun. Uh, you know, this to speculate though, to speculate though, can I get into the speculation zone at least week one schedule? This is my guess. I think we get, well, I think it's clear. We're going to get one game on Saturday. I've always thought three games in one day might be a, a stretch, especially if you want people in the crowd. I mean, getting people to sit through possibly nine hours, right, in a right. row, that's that's kind of a tall order. Now, especially knowing it's Easter, I, I almost guarantee you we get that Monday game to kick off the first week. And maybe, I don't know if it's one or two, but I could see two games Sunday. So one Saturday, two Sunday, one Monday which does make me a little upset that I'm flying out Monday morning, but it is my wife's birthday the day after, so forgive me. Family always comes first, but we are going to be out there for that first game, and however many games are on Sunday. But now knowing it Easter Sunday, I think we get a game Monday night, two early and afternoon-y games, right? We kind of get everything wrapped up early on Sunday, and then, I mean, that you and I, Zach, we got to go find a place to get a honey-baked ham or something. I mean, I'm <laughs> a big Easter feast. boy. Easter boy is like spring Thanksgiving for me. And so I, I need to get my fixings. Now, I will say, thanks to our Discord, there and, I, oh, geez, I should have these things prepared. But there is a guy that's making us a travel guide of all the things to do and see out there. So if we do have some time, because I hope so, I do want to try some of those things out. But we do need to figure out, because there is probably going to be a lot of things closed on that Sunday. Right. So we got to, I mean, and if I, I want mean, beer, I, can, I need to figure out the laws in this state fast. <laughs> not, not, not to brag or anything, but I'm taking this as preliminary because I'm going two weeks in a row. I know. So, you know, I'm, I'm taking this one as scouting. Yeah, I know. You. <laughs> I'll tell you this. At minimum, at minimum, we have a Crystal Burger right by our Airbnb. I'm excited to try that. And I did look over on Google Maps. I'll, I mean, we at bare minimum, we got to try some barbecue while we're out there. Because there's some places, there's some places that, boy, oh, boy, they look tasty. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be interesting. I don't know why it took me this long to realize it was a holiday weekend. But it's going to be an exciting holiday weekend. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to meeting all the fans because, I mean, we're doing spring stock on Saturday. But realistically, we're going to be at the games on Sunday, however many there are. I, I have to assume there's at least a game on Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, so whoever's going to be at those games, come and hang out with us as well. We're going to be there, out there. Not doing like a huge tailgate, but we will be there. Come get your picture taken. Get a thumbs up. Uh, do whatever you want. We're going to have We're going to have a good time. I'm looking forward to it. I think we covered all the topics though this week. Is is there anything I missed? Am I am I out of line here? Yeah, not not really. Um, I mean, I I was wanting to maybe, and it's kind of it, it kind of got cleared up, so it's not as big of a deal now. But you know, uh, Daryl Johnston was on hmm. the number one ranked show with R.J. Young. Um, there's a quote that was taken out of context was based on kind of their uh, discussions on the on why they're a better option than the CFL. Um, which is kind of, they stated, Daryl Stenter stated that they have more to offer. The quote that was mentioned says that they had more to offer on the context though, rewatching it. It's essentially about, we can give you an Avenue to get to the NFL right out of the bat off at the season. It's the off season. That was the gist of it. You know, like you come here, you play, you go into summer, you're able to get out of the league in time to go into camps and teams can evaluate you. You go to the CFL, you play you're stuck until November mm -hmm. and then you have to reset. That was the whole thing. Um, it was, it was just kind of a quick discussion. No, but I'm, that's glad about you, it. I'm glad you brought that up. Well, either way, that was a really good interview too, by the way. So if you it haven't was, checked it, it out, it check was. it out. I mean, RJ young, uh, he, so he does writing for Fox sports and podcasting and God, it's, it's the number one rated show. Is that the name of it? I always get it backwards. Yeah, the number, rated one, number one, number show. one, number one rank show. It's, uh, ranked, it's a, yes, yes, yes. It's yes. kind of a play on words of uh, college, college ranking systems. Cause it's a college football 
is what his leans mm-hmm. into a lot of the time. So solid that's interview, why though. he was on this. Solid mm-hmm. interview. Definitely should check it out if you haven't. Same with the uh, Kyle Laletta interview. Like I said, it's good, solid stuff. I mean, soak in as much of this content as you can. I mean, if you're listening to us, clearly you like USFL content. So there's other content out there besides us that's maybe – almost as good no i kid it's it's clearly just it's, as good if not better just- i'm joking um uh i kid i kid by now you guys probably know that i'm never i'm never a very serious person but that was a fun week we, we talked about a lot we went over a lot of top topics good topics bad topics i think we got them all covered i think we ex- exhausted them as much as we could on the lawsuit piece though real quick so like zach alluded to earlier Working on setting up a couple interviews, uh, one with uh, the, the the gentleman from Reddit who went through and, like I said, very meticulously broke down the lawsuit. Uh, so that's Jack Williams RTF, JWRTF on Reddit, Jack Williams RTF on Twitter. We're going to be setting up some time with him because, like I said, he's, he's a paralegal. He's in our Discord. I think he'll give us some good insight, maybe some things we missed. And then remind me again, who's the, there's another interview that you're looking to get set up as well. Is that right? If I can, I, I haven't reached out yet, but as I mentioned, Darren Heitner, I'd like to reach out to him again. He's an adjunct professor at the university of Florida in their Levin college of law. Um, if Darren happens to be listening, then, Hey, I'll be sending you an email here soon, or I'll be sending you DM on Twitter, but that's what we're trying to do. We want to, we want to get more professional opinion. Like I don't want, both of us don't want to leave you just our takes again we're not lawyers we're not in the legal system we only get what we read so we want to get some extra content and it'll be in the interview sections that you're used to with like players i imagine we'll get something similar to that but we're going to be we're going to be setting that up uh getting at least a little more clarification hopefully before we hit march 16th so Um, keep keep close to the youtube channel for that extra content well and speaking of player interviews we got we got a couple of those coming up as well so i don't know if you Um, want to break those down those should be coming in the next week or so won't give specific days but break the news here we should have talked about this earlier well i i got at least uh i got two interviews with three players uh as funny as that sounds so uh, first off, um, we're going to have a uh, wide receiver, Jeff Bidette, who I did record that before this show, uh, that'll be coming out probably this coming week. And then I also have, uh, I had a brother's interview. So Aaron and Ottawa, a I was able to have both of them on to discuss their draftings, uh, where, cause he had, uh, Aaron who went to the Birmingham stallions, Ottawa went to the Michigan Panthers. So we get to talk with them or I get to talk with both of them too. That'll be, those will be in our interview section for our podcast interview series on our YouTube page. Recommend you check out some other ones there, but we're going to keep getting players. I, that is something I love with this is I like talking with the folks that are on the field and we'll be keeping on, keeping an eye on trying to get more as we go along. I had a good time with those. You'll, you'll enjoy for sure. I think you'll enjoy both of them. Uh, Jeff Bidetz was, was great. And just getting that brother, brotherly connection with Aaron and Ottawa, I thought was, uh, a nice touch to this. So stay tuned for those. Yeah. And like Zach said, we probably have, well, not probably, we have a lot more coming. Like I said, it's just a matter of getting time and, and interviewing the people and producing them and putting them out. But the first two, they're scheduled to come out, like I said, over the next week. So keep, uh, stay tuned for that. And this helps, like I said, so if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, but click the bell, it builds morale. And more importantly, it'll tell you when we drop a new player interview or new video, and if we go live, which again, it looks like we're going to be going live next week on the 10th, we'll drop some more information on social media as far as the timing and all of that fun stuff. But I, I think we do it. I think we do it. But uh, since we're on social media, uh, as always, go ahead and follow us at USFL Podcast, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those good places. One of these days, maybe we'll get TikTok. I don't care. If you're looking for some retro gear, you want some good stuff, you like the XFL, World Football League, USFL, whatever it may be, head over to Royal Retros. Use code USFL Podcast for 10% off your order. Like I said, we have, they have a lot of gear there. And stay tuned. Like I said, we're going to be dropping more details about spring stock and how you might be able to secure that Steve Young LA Express jersey from Retro Royals in our spring stock giveaway. And that's not the only giveaway. Because we're on the right. road to 100K. Next stop's 5K. We're halfway there. We're over 2,500. Once we get to 5K, we're giving out another USFL jersey official from the USFL shop. They're pre ordered till mid May, but I don't think we're going to have to wait that long to meet the number. So we'll order it and you'll get it when it is 
done being produced. I don't know how the process is going to work over there. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm excited. Next week, episode 10. We're over two months into this bad boy. I mean, I can't thank you guys enough. I never would have expected I, I, again, I do everything I do. I want it to be a success. More importantly, I want to have fun. If even if we had zero followers, Zach, and we're having fun like we are now, I wouldn't even care. We could oh, have man. one or two as long as you're having fun, but it's not. We're at over 2,500 in two months. That is amazing. Let's get up to 5K. We're going to have fun. We can't wait to see you at Springstock. Any last words, though, Zach, before we, we wrap this bad boy up? hang on tight and stay tuned for the ride because it's going to keep on getting, I would say more hectic one way or another going into the season. So trust me, we got more stuff is coming out. It's what we keep being told ourselves and trust me, you're going to get more from from just us too. So uh, yeah, strap in, buckle up. There's a lot coming your coming our way. Thank you very much. It's going to be fun. So until next time, tune in every Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern on YouTube or your platform podcast platform of choice sign you up